Hey guys, Matt Schmidt here, also known as DJ Skitty. We're coming to you live from Miami Shores, Florida. And uh, I'm here with Richard from Aficionado, and we're gonna show you my tanks. All right, we can talk a little bit about my 80 mixed reef system first. Um, this tank, this tank actually started out as a Caribbean specific only biotope because I had a 90 gallon mixed reef that had Australian, Indo, Vietnamese, um, stuff from the United States, Hawaiian. I already had a mixed reef. When I decided that having four systems became too much, it was too much work. I was working on fish tanks all day and I wasn't really enjoying the fish tanks. So when I decided it was too much, it only made sense to consolidate down to the 80 Peninsula. I just happen to like Peninsula style tanks a lot better than the standard 90 tank setup because you have three viewing panes or panels versus on a standard 90 with an overflow, you basically get two viewing sides with maybe a, a third of that remaining third side open. So to me, this just made it, for someone that has as much coral and pieces as I do, you can place them all around the tank and utilize every bit of space, the back side, the front side, the floor. That's why I decided to go with the, the, the shallow 80 rimless. I also like looking top down at corals. I think that's one of the most underappreciated views because a lot of these tall tanks, you, don't, you, don't, you never really get a chance to look down at the corals how they actually grow out when they're facing the sun. Um, so this gives me the ability to not only view from the side, but also to view from the top. Uh, I went with a much larger stand because this system houses a lot of equipment in the sump area, which we'll show you. Um, but I run a, a 40 breeder, a modified 40 breeder tank with baffles as a sump. And I run a nature reef uh, denitrifying setup. I also have three reactors, one with raw phos, one with carbon, and the third, uh, the third is actually sitting empty at this moment. Um, I was gonna run some sort of bio pellets, but being as that I'm running the denitrifying setup, there's no need for that extra uh, phosphate and nitrate removal. I don't want to strip the tank completely barren or you, you start to really notice the LPS suffer, the polo suffer, and this is a very much a mixed reef. Um, I mean, you have LPS, you have SPS, you have polyps, you have um, coralomorphs, you have anemones and, and, and mushrooms, and um, I really wanted to go for the, the, the most mixed reef I possibly could. Basically, anywhere crazy coral comes from that we can legally collect it, that I, I, want, I wanted a piece from there. So this tank, this tank is kind of the epitome of my collection. Um, I really, I'm not a big fan of the frag culture, as in people buy a frag, wait till it spits out a nub and, and completely decimate it just to try and make another frag to make money. I, this tank is basically the untouchable tank. Once I put a frag in here, until it's a full colony, and when I say colony, I mean the size of your fist, it's not gonna be touched. So this is kind of the untouchable tank. And then I have my second system, which is actually connected to the, to the main system. 30, it's a 30 gallon deep blue frag tank. And so between the, the, between the 30 gallon frag tank, the 80 gallon rimless, and the 40 gallon breeder, uh, we're working with about 150 gallons of water, give or take, with the rock volume. Um, the more water volume you can have, we all know this in the hobby, the more stable your tank's gonna be, the better things are gonna do in the long run because you're not gonna be swinging as much. You're not gonna swing temperature. You're not gonna swing with your alkalinity and calcium nearly as quickly as you would if you were running a small tank like I have in the bedroom. All right, now as far as equipment goes on the tank, I am running an eight bulb T5 setup. What I did with this setup, it's a little retrofitted. What I did with the setup was pull the four center T5 lights out along with the reflectors and I mounted two Radeon G3 fixtures on the inside. This way I'm able to have that pop of the blue LEDs that I like at nighttime but I'm also able to run four T5 bulbs for about four and a half hours during the day to really give the corals what they need. They really they want that, that spectrum of light. Moving down in the tank as far as water flow goes uh, the entire system is run off a DC 12,000, that's by Jabao, and it's been running for two years. I know, I know there's some haters out there, but man, those pumps. I got two years on that thing already, and it's working great. The, uh, the main flow in the tank is controlled.
controlled by a max spec gyre. That's the larger of the two units. I'm not, I think it's the 350. I'm not sure on the model numbers, but it's the lar there's two sizes. It's the larger of the two. And, uh, and then what I have over here on the side of the tank, if, I, if I'm gonna have a party or people over, normally this will be removed. I won't have this here, but I wanted to show it to you guys today. I call this the detritus buster. When you're running a, a dual island setup in a peninsula style where you have the flow coming you know, down and over the islands as such, in the middle, detritus tends to build up over time. So I have this pump here basically on a weekly basis, and it runs for about an hour at a time, uh, a day. It doesn't even run for much more than an hour, but what it does is it keeps, and, uh, it keeps the detritus that gets stuck in this center section suspended long enough that it can make it into the overflow down to the sump and get filtered out. Um, moving down from the tank, we have an extra large stand. I had the stand built extra large because I wanted to be able to fit every bit of equipment underneath this that, uh, that I was intending on running. Um, I have a four channel doser, which runs calcium, alkalinity, magnesium. And then I'm dosing uh, Mark, Mark Eskenazi, me coral. I'm dosing his amino acids at five milliliters every other day through that fourth channel. Um, as far as filtration goes, I'm running a Vertex skimmer. I'm running a Nature Reef denitrifier, which is amazing. I can't speak highly enough about the system. I don't want to say it's set it and forget it, but it's pretty darn uh, maintenance free. You just need to make sure the flow inside the, inside the uh, chamber stays and that they constantly have a food source. Um, but it really does a tremendous job at keeping the nitrates at zero, the phosphate at almost indetectable levels. Um, so that, that along with a small amount of Roafaz in a fluidized chamber and a carbon. I run a little carbon in a fluidized chamber. All of these chambers run off of that DC 12,000. They all run off of a, uh, of a two inch manifold that comes off of the pump and is underneath the tank. Um, I really like that setup. I told myself when I broke down my 90 gallon tank, I wouldn't have 15 max maxi jets running lines all over the sump and it looks look basically like a spaghetti bowl. This is a much cleaner setup and solution. I highly recommend setting up a manifold for any future tank setup that you're possibly gonna do. Um, not only is it efficient, it's gonna keep your heat and temperature down, you're using less pumps and electricity and you're still getting all the same flow that you would if you had 10 or 15, you know, 1200 maxi jets in your sump. So, as far as this tank goes, that's about it equipment wise. The sump is lit on a opposite schedule of the main system. Uh, so the sump comes on at nighttime. I keep a little bit of catamorpha in the sump. It fluctuates, but never really, it doesn't really ever grow all that much. Uh, I would attribute that to the fact that I have such low nitrate and phosphate numbers. Um, the, uh, the entire system is running off an Apex controller. Um, this thing has made my life so easy. Uh, it just keeps a steady lock on the pH and the temperature for me. It runs the pumps, so when my main pump shuts off, my skimmer shuts off. Everyone knows, you know, if you don't have those times, you can have a messy skimmer if you have a power outage. And there's a whole bunch of things that, that this Apex does that I honestly take for granted now because it's, you know, once, once you have one, I think it's probably the most essential piece of, of, of a reef tank is stability. So having an auto top off and having a uh, controller are my like two most essential things I would say, on top of having good lighting and good flow. Um, if you have those four key pieces, you are gonna be a successful reefer because basically all we're doing here is mimicking the ocean. That's about it for the 80 reef. The frag tank over here, is actually running on the same water system. Like I said, this is plumbed off of one of those manifold outlets. And it, so this water volume actually runs through the whole main system that's in the frag tank. As far as flow goes in the frag tank, I'm running an MP10 by Ecotech. And I also have down on the very bottom another WP40, or I believe that's a WP25, I'm sorry. 
uh, Jabal pump, and that runs again for about an hour every day. That's just to keep the tritus suspended off the bottom of the tank. As far as lighting goes, I have a four bulb, 24 inch long fixture that I basically retrofitted to make a miniature version of the lights that I'm running on the 80. It has two AI nanos retrofitted to the center strip and then two T5 bulbs running on the outside. I'm using ATI bulbs, aqua blue and blue plus. And this frag tank is lit for approximately 10 hours, four of those hours combined with the T5s. I think if I could give one piece of advice to a fellow reefer, um, I would have to say stability is key. Do whatever you possibly can to make your reef.